All right, welcome to this introduction to a better web server. Uh, first, thank you to API Platform for hosting this event and for letting me use English, the only language I know better than Go. Uh, also, thank you to ZeroSSL for um, being the, the primary sponsor in this project. Um, and yeah, so my name is Matt Holt, and I wrote the Caddy web server. Uh, it began uh, in 2014 during the sake of my undergraduate CS degree at BYU, where I was constantly making little websites for school, work, and for fun. Uh, and I got fed up with using traditional web servers uh, that made my workflow extra tedious. For example, setting up Nginx to render markdown pages was a pain. Setting up HTTPS was a pain. Setting up multiple sites was a pain. Templating was a pain. Configuration was a pain. It was all just so painful. I finally expressed to one of my classmates who went on to work at Microsoft, actually, while, while I got rejected at the same time interviewing, <laughs> uh, Nate McMaster, while we were out walking um, on campus, maybe I should just write a web server and go. And in 2015, I, I finished the, some of it and put it on GitHub, and the rest is history for another time, maybe another presentation. Uh, Caddy 2 is a web server that will challenge the way you're used to setting up web services. It will save you time and money uh, in both development and production costs. Caddy deployments have fewer moving parts, so you'll have less problems to deal with in production and less maintenance to perform on your infrastructure. Um, we call it the ultimate server, actually, because it does things that no other server can do. And it's called Caddy because it takes care of the menial tasks that normally consume your attention when using other web servers, such as Apache or Nginx. Uh, Caddy does things differently in an effort to be like more powerful and flexible and productive. So expect to be surprised by certain behaviors or conventions or other nuances that you're not used to. Caddy can be uh, opinionated at times, but usually it's for security or to cater to the 99% use case more than the 1% case. Uh, if you want to check it out now during the, this video, uh, just go to caddyserve.com slash v2. You can learn about the latest version um, that I'll be speaking about today. So what is the 99% use case? Well, I understand most of you are JavaScript, PHP, maybe Python developers. Uh, you probably have static files like CSS and images, and you probably have some API powered by a backend to which you proxy. Um, so static files and reverse proxying are, are two of the, the main cases for sure. Uh, load balancing and ingress are fancy words for reverse proxying, but it's all actually the same thing. Caddy can do all these. Um, TLS termination is another reason that a lot of people put up a web server in front of their, their app, even though, even though maybe your application platform like Node.js or, or whatever can handle TLS termination and can um, and can uh, do all that for you. Uh, often people still put up web servers for these other reasons um, because because they want to separate you want to separate like web facing HTTP concerns from your core application logic. You don't want to have to deal with that. So things like templating and headers uh, and authentication security, you want to make sure that that's just taken care of. You don't want to have to deal with that inside your application. Uh, rate limiting will help ensure service availability, um, but again, that's a lot of state that you don't want to mess with. Um, things like compression is also really useful. Rewriting and redirects, these are similar uh, concepts. Rewrites happen internally, unbeknownst to the client, whereas redirects are HTTP responses. Uh, these are all things that should happen before it gets to your application or after it leaves your application. Uh, multiplexing is also a super common reason. You might have like several. So, so multiplexing in general means serving multiple things at one point. So this could be protocols, like maybe you're serving TLS and HTTP on the same port. You can do this with Caddy with a plugin. Maybe you're serving multiple backend applications on the same domain name uh, based on like the request path or something like that. Um, I think Apache code calls this virtual hosting or something. Uh, it's all just multiplexing. And the idea is that the web server will take care of figuring out which, um, where to route the, the packet, where to route the request to. 
Um, another common reason too is for maintenance and, and errors. If you want to take your application down for maintenance and, and have some good error handling or, or fallover or failovers and load balancing, a uh, web server and friend is really good at that. So Caddy is good at all these things, but I'll show you why um, Caddy is a compelling uh, alternative to Apache and Nginx and other servers even. Even the newer, trendier ones with all the like fancy infrastructure things coming out, um, you should still use Caddy, uh, <laughs> which you'll see why this is compelling here in a few minutes. Um, <clears throat> Caddy will challenge you to kind of change your and improve your web development habits. So for one thing, uh, HTTPS is the default protocol, and this is the only server to use HTTPS by default still. So it doesn't use HTTP by default, really. If you give it, you'll see when you give it a configuration, um, it'll serve it with TLS. And to that end, TLS certificates are automatically obtained and renewed for you. Um, this is a super important feature that I think is really undervalued. Um, and uh, you'll see why like it, it really is a game changer. You don't need other external commands like cron jobs and certbot and other scripts or utilities. It's all just baked into the web server and you won't have to think about it. Most of you won't even have to, to look at certificates or worry about them. Another huge compelling reason to use Caddy over other servers is because Go, the language Go, gives you more memory safety than C or C++ does. Um, so you might remember several years ago the, the Heartbleed vulnerability, the, the famous exploit where the vast majority of web servers on the internet were leaking their private keys because there was a bug in some C library uh, at OpenSSL that, that would leak the private key. Um, this is common in all C programs, really, and Go programs are impervious to these kinds of vulnerabilities. Um, so Caddy, which did exist at the time, it wasn't on GitHub, but <laughs> it did exist at the time, didn't, it was never vulnerable to, to these kinds of, um, to these kinds of exploits. And um, so it won't leak your private key like that. So. So already, just by using Caddy instead of Nginx, you're, you're gaining security, you're improving that. Um, another reason people like to use Caddy is because the Caddy file, we call it, is a, is a way to configure Caddy. It's very simple and memorable. Uh, I'll show you that in a minute. Um, but if, if config files aren't your thing, it's also very programmable and automatable. You, if you want to integrate this with like a, an application or a, a system you're building, um, Caddy's config API makes this very flexible and very powerful. Uh, it's also designed with a modular architecture, meaning that you can extend it with plugins. Um, these would be written in Go um, and, and compiled in. And this uh, lets Caddy do basically anything. And I, I kind of mean anything that, it, that your server, like that your computer can do. <laughs> um, and similar, related to that is, is all of Caddy deployments are, are static binaries. It's literally just a single executable file. Um, and so you don't have to worry, you don't have to use like a package manager to install them. You don't have to worry about um, versions of things. I'm just, I'm remembering my nightmares with Python in college, trying to get various Python scripts working because of dependencies and management nightmares. And anyway, um, you don't have to worry about that. You just plop the executable file on your server and you run it. Literally it. Putting it in your path is optional. Just make it executable and run it. Um, so very easy to deploy. Not much that can go wrong there. Um, it also has sane defaults. I don't know. I do not know why this is such a unique feature, but like we actually like have defaults that just work for TLS and PHP and proxying and serving static files. Defaults that work for the 90 percent or 99 percent of use cases um, you know good secure TLS defaults good reasonable PHP defaults when you're when you have modern apps um, things just just kind of work out of the box for the most part and if they don't you can like tweak it so you'll see that caddy is more than just a web server it's really a platform on which you can like build um, applications and services so I hope you'll take advantage of that and really unlock its potential 
So let's just jump into this. I'll show you the basic use here. Um, so caddy being a server is like a long running process. And to start it, you just say caddy run and nothing will happen. And that's intentional because you didn't give it any config probably. So um, the what, what caddy does do actually when you run caddy run is it opens a port on 2019. You can see in the next, uh, you can see that in the next command here. And that port will accept a configuration. So you actually, you give Caddy its configuration while it's online, uh, and it will dynamically apply that while it's running. So here we're posting a JSON document to its load endpoint, and this will cause Caddy to load its uh, initial, uh, to load a configuration. And this is how Caddy does all of its configuration, actually, is Caddy is configured with JSON through an API endpoint. Um, I'll show you in, in, a, in a few minutes how the command line can make that easier by allowing you to work with config files and doing the API stuff for you under the hood. But um, anyway, let me show you how this API works because I think it's important to gain an understanding of this. So I'm going to first run caddy just like this and you can see that the admin endpoint is started and it's at localhost 2019. Now by default this is only accessible on localhost for obvious reasons and um, so I have my my rest client here and I'm just doing an HTTP get request to this slash config endpoint and when I do I get null and that's because Caddy has no config initially. Now, this is not my website. This is the administration endpoint where Caddy is managed. So it's a very important distinction. Um, so it just says null, and that's OK. Uh, but let's say I want to serve a website on port 8080. Well, uh, I have this get request here for port 8080, and it's not going to work because I haven't told Caddy to do that yet. But I can, by posting, uh, to this load endpoint, I can post a JSON document. And this is what I'm gonna post, is I'm gonna tell Caddy to listen on port 8080, and I'm gonna tell it to run a file server with directory listings enabled. Um, and then, and this ID thing, I don't know if I wanna, if I need to get into this right now, this is just a convenience thing. If you want to later access just this part of the configuration right here, uh, more directly, more easily than than going through this entire path. You can the, the ID thing is just for config management. I'll I'll show you that later. So anyway, I have this JSON document. I'm going to post it, and I just get 200 OK back. Now, if I look at the logs here from Caddy, the, it it logs this request uh, actually the get and the post, and you can see that it um, it auto saves the config. First of all, that's actually useful. Since these are online config updates, it auto saves it so that you can resume them later. Uh, and then it loaded the, the config. So that's great. Let's go back and try it. Let's try loading my site at port 8080. And voila, you can see I have a directory listing with one file. Um, and I have it's a it's a fully functional file server, so I can actually like if I request uh, just that file. Ta -da. The Korok seed is happy that I found it. Um, and then if I go back, I can actually get Caddy's config, and you can see there's the config I posted. So I can see what its current config is as well. Um, now that's all fine and good. But let's suppose that I want to make a change. Let's suppose that I want to change it to port 8081. Well, I can do that without having to post the entire config body which I could do, but, but I can also just tell it to change just this port. And you'll see that there's a path that is constructed to that value. Uh, it's apps, HTTP, servers, example, listen. And then it's the zero, the first uh, address in that array. So I can make a request, a patch request, that uses this config path, where I'm going to change that string to 8081 and send that. And you can see that that was successful. Um, so now, if I get to config again, this 8080 should change to 8081. And you'll see that if I try 
the server, try to load that file on 8080, it doesn't work because I changed it to 8081. So anyway, you have this API that lets you do all these online config updates. It's really cool. Um, if I want to access just that file server's configuration using that ID that I showed you earlier, I can also just do this and voila. So I don't need to like, the path to this object is irrelevant, basically. So that can be really handy too. Kind of like a bookmark. Um, and then when I'm done, I can either unload or stop the, the server completely. And if you go back here, you can see that the admin uh, endpoint shut down the server. So anyway, the API is really cool, um, very, very intuitive and flexible. And um, now you don't always have to use the API. You can use config files. So like I was saying, um, you can say caddy run, and then with the config flag, you can pass in the name of a config file, and caddy will do the API stuff for you. So this will run caddy with a caddy.json config um, right away when it starts. Or um, if you don't like writing JSON, we have these things called config adapters, and this is really cool because we've kind of solved the problem with the whole config format war. Like it doesn't matter now. If you don't like writing JSON, then a lot of people like writing caddy files, which I'll show you why in, in a minute. Um, so you can give it a caddy file and caddy smart enough in the case of a caddy file format to, to know what it is and to, to adapt it to JSON for you. Um, and, and so this is, this is kind, of a, kind of a new concept, I guess, is that you can actually write your config in anything. And if there's a config adapter for it, it will just convert it to JSON for you. So if you have an nginx config and you want to run caddy, you can say caddy run, give your nginx config, and then just tell it to use the nginx adapter, like the third command here, and it will run caddy with your nginx config. That's kind of cool. Um, and if you if you don't want to use any of those, you can you have your choice of, we actually already have adapters for YAML, if you hate your life, TOML, JSON uh, variant, uh, Q, HCL, and, and you can have others. As long as it converts its input to, to caddy JSON, then it's a config adapter. So yeah, write your config however you want. If you don't want to use config files, use the API. Anyway, you can, it's really flexible like that. So this config JSON though, it's kind of, let's look at it here though, because um, it's important to know that the caddy actually only does a couple of very core central things. So caddy config JSON has four keys. You can see admin, which configures caddy's administration endpoint and other things related to the process itself. Logging, which obviously configures logging. Storage uh, tells caddy where or how to store stateful assets like CLS certificates uh, and other like long-term things. And then app. Uh, is kind of the meat and potatoes of what Caddy does. It's, it's what Caddy is actually, it's like why you're running Caddy. <laughs> so an app would be like the HTTP server or TLS stuff. Um, there are a variety of apps available and Caddy is more than just an HTTP server. So I'll show you that. And in fact, because there are different ways to satisfy different properties of the config, um, this is Caddy's modular architecture. So so for example, there are different ways to do storage, right? Like the default way to store things is typically in the file system, the local disk. Uh, and in Caddy's default is, is a folder on disk. But you could store things other ways, like you could store things in a database, um, like a SQL database or a Redis database. Or you might store things in the cloud, like on S3 or some other online storage. And so that's why storage is modular. You can actually put any, in the place of the screen text, you could put any config for a storage module there. Similar with apps, there are a variety of things Caddy can do. Um, so in red, we have the, the app name, the module name. And then in the green, we have the actual, where the module config would go. So um, I'll show you that in a minute, but basically all Caddy knows how to do is start and stop apps when the config is loaded and unloaded. Um, it knows how to load storage modules, like that's, that's it. It doesn't actually know how the storage works. 
It doesn't know what the apps actually do. It just starts them and stops them. So this is what Caddy does at its core is just manage configuration like this. Now, if we expand out this config a little bit, I'll show you one that just configures some apps. Well, one app, the HTTP app. Um, this is a, a valid config. You saw something similar in the API demo a minute ago. Um, here we're defining uh, HTTP servers. Uh, we've defined one anyway called example. And all it does is listen on port 80. So in green is the HTTP app modules configuration. And all Caddy knows how to do is load this HTTP module and call start on it. And the HTTP module does the rest with the green uh, config there. Um, this is actually a really powerful idea. It's not necessarily new, but it's, I think, applied. This is a very like novel way to apply this kind of architecture. Um, you have kind of this one all does all application that you can deploy. That's a really powerful idea. Um, I'm actually running a few instances of Caddy where uh, because of app modules and various plugins, uh, I have one single static binary that it's doing like 10 things, but it's all doing them really well and it's super easy to manage because it's just a single JSON document and I can reconfigure it all on the fly and I don't have to remember how all these different tools and programs work and updating, updating them all. It's just all so self-contained and it's awesome. So anyway, um, so yeah, this just opens a, a, a server on port 80 and it just responds to 200 okay. It doesn't do anything, but it opens a port. Um, we can expand this though and do something useful. And so here we have, a server listening on port 443 this time. And we've defined an HTTP route. And uh, it has, so routes, routes are defined by matchers and handlers. Matchers uh, define the class of requests that the route applies to, and handle uh, defines the handlers, or like middleware, so to speak, that uh, are how the request is actually handled. So in this case, on port 443, we are matching all requests that have a host of example.com. And for all of those, we're saying, hey, run a file server. And uh, they're rooted out of this directory var dub dub dub. And then there's this placeholder for the request host. The placeholder is like a variable um, in like Nginx. So uh, it's just a little different in Caddy. It's just named differently. So there's these curly braces are, are the placeholder. Now in this case, the example with the placeholder is a little, it's contrived because it's always going to be example.com. But the idea is, I just wanted to show you that. So in red text, you can see we actually have some module names, host and file server. So there are different ways to match requests, right? So that's why these are modules. You can match on the request host, you can match on the path, you can match on the remote IP address or the method or um, headers, whatever else. Like there's so many ways to match requests. Uh, in Nginx, you might be familiar with like location blocks. That's kind of like a matcher, but they're kind of limited to just the path, I think, and like the query, like the URI. Um, you can, I think, do some hacks for a few other things, but um, but in in Caddy, it's very like very first class, like very much more intuitive, I think, way more powerful. Uh, yeah, very, very cool. Um, and then handlers, obviously, there are different kinds of handlers. So the file server is one, reverse proxy is another, header is another, encode is another that will like do compression. Uh, there's a bunch of different handlers. So the matcher module is in yellow and the handler module is in green. And yeah. Now, a lot of people, oh, actually, I should mention too, this config is all you need. This will serve your site over HTTPS. Because you have a host matcher, for example.com, Caddy's like, oh, hey, you have, well, the HTTP module is like, you have a, a site that's matching on example.com. Well, therefore, there must, that domain is probably pointed to the server. Therefore, I can get a certificate for it and serve it over HTTPS. So you'll actually get a certificate for example.com for you and, and use it on this port. You don't have to think about it or do anything. That is actually an amazing experience. So if you haven't experienced that yet, you should, you should really try try Caddy. Um, so another thing too is that, yes, this is JSON. This is a little tedious to write by hand. 
you have extreme control and flexibility over your server this way. These are like the actual, this is kind of a one-to-one -one mapping of the actual structures in data structures in memory when the server is running. You have a lot of control over that. Um, but if you don't need that much control and don't want it to be this like verbose, um, which by the way, this is great when you're automating and integrating with applications and stuff, but when you're writing stuff by hand, you can use the caddy file. I'll show you an equivalent caddy file for this config. And this is it. Uh, it's actually funny. You don't even need a caddy file for, for a simple file server. You can actually just run caddy file server command, and it will run a file server. Um, but I'll show you the caddy file here for illustration purposes. Um, the first line of the caddy file is always just your site name, so example.com in this case. You hit enter, and then like, uh, and then it's just directives how you want your site to work. So in this case, we're defining a, a root. We're rooting this site in var dub dub dub. And then we have a, a host placeholder here in green. That's kind of a, a caddy file shorthand for the one we saw earlier, which was http.request.host. This is just the shorter variant um, that you can use in the caddy file. Again, not super useful in this example, but just wanted to show you that. And then we're enabling the file server. So a couple simple really intuitive lines and voila, you have your site up and running. And yes, this will serve your site over HTTPS with a certificate from Let's Encrypt or Zero SSL. And uniquely, Caddy will fall back to another CA if the first one doesn't, if it can't get a certificate. So if Let's Encrypt is down, for example, it could use Zero SSL and vice versa. That's a very unique feature that also I don't think any other server is doing. Um, yeah. Now, if you do want to serve your site over HTTP, all you have to do is just change the site name to is prefix it with HTTP. Uh, it's really simple. Uh, now, suppose that we want to serve multiple sites. Um, we have, let's say we have a bunch of, of different folders in our var www folder, and they all have different sites in them. Well, easy enough, we just add the site names to the, the first line. And so now we can serve both example.com and sub.example.com out of uh, our www folder. And this, in this case, the host placeholder actually is useful because now it will actually depend. It, may, it might be example.com, and other requests, it might be sub.example.com. So it's actually going to be dynamic here. Um, and we could do this all day. We could add, we could add 10,000 host names to this config, and it would be fine. Caddy will try managing a certificate for all those, unless you tell it not to. Um, but, I mean, unless you control all those thousands of names, you probably don't want to do that. One, because updating your config all the time uh, is tedious, like <laughs> adding more as you know, get more users or whatever, or as users leave. Um, you know, maybe they're, maybe, but if they're like users custom domains, you don't want to do this because you don't control the domain, and so you don't want to tell Caddy to serve their site if their domain isn't configured properly and it's out of you know your control. Um, I'm going to show you a really cool trick that a lot of companies spend a lot of money on with complex infrastructure to manage uh, certificates and sites for custom domains for all their customers. And I'll show you how Caddy can do this in like a minute um, and explain how it works. So, um, so again, I should clarify too that it's okay to update your config often. Caddy can handle a lot of config updates, but uh, it's just tedious, right? Like, why do that if you don't have to? So, let me show you this config. Now, we've changed the first line um, to just port 443. So we've gotten rid of the host names, and we're just saying just open port 443, the HTTPS port. And you've got the same root and file server, but we're adding PHP fast CGI. Now this directive will is actually a reverse, it's actually the documentation will show you it expands out to a full like reverse proxy directive that's specially configured to use a fast CGI transport with presets for PHP. It's like a very specific directive, a very specific reverse proxy case, but it works for almost all modern PHP apps. Uh, just kind of out of the box. You can tweak it a little bit if you need to for your your specific app, but this will basically reverse proxy to um, uh, the port 9000 and um, where your PHP FPM is running. So I just wanted to show you that. 
Uh, that's really useful for a lot of like WordPress sites and other like PHP stuff. Um, okay, but, the, but what I really wanted to show you here was this TLS directive. We're enabling what's called on-demand TLS. So even though we haven't given Caddy any host names in its config, we're telling it to manage TLS on demand. So what this means is when a client makes a connection to your server and the client sends, hey, I'm, I'm trying to connect to example.com, server will be like, oh, I don't have a certificate for this. Hang on a second. It'll hold that connection open while it gets a certificate for that domain name. And if it succeeds, it should only take a few seconds. And, and then it will install and, and serve that certificate um, to the client uh, right away <laughs> during the first handshake that needs it. And only that one handshake is, is delayed. After that, it's, it's instant, of course, because it already has the certificate. Um, so on-demand TLS is really cool because now you can just turn this on and for you know, and then you have 10,000 customers sign up and all they have to do is at their leisure, they point their domain name to your server and voila, they're using their custom domain because when Caddy first starts seeing requests come in or connections come in for that, uh, domain name, it will just uh, attempt to manage the certificate for them. And um, and it will delete expired ones after they, they fade out of use. So really useful feature. Now, I commented this is insecure for production. I did that because uh, someone could abuse this by setting up domain names to point to your server and then just like hammer your server with a bunch of names that um, and maybe fill up your disk space or like use up your quota, like your bandwidth quota or whatever. Um, so you wanna, you wanna be able to restrict which domain names Caddy's will have to get certificates for on demand. Um, so I'll show you that in the next slide. So here um, we have a, a Caddy file where the first, at the top of the Caddy file, we have what's called a global options block. This is where you put settings that don't really apply to specific sites just, it's just kind of it's global options, you know, global configuration. Um, and so we're just telling it for on-demand TLS that it needs to ask this particular endpoint whether it can get a certificate, whether it's authorized to do that. So you'll see that the site block is basically the same. We still have on-demand enabled and, and everything. Um, we just added the global option block and um, we're just, we have our, our check.php script that, as, as an example here, that it will get a request to that to that file and uh, with a domain name in the query string, and we just probably check our database and see if it's a domain name we recognize from one of our customers, and if so, we return 200 OK, and Caddy will be allowed to get a certificate. Otherwise, it will not get a certificate. So this will prevent abuse. So this file, this like what, 10 lines or whatever, is your complete production ready, uh, like practically infinitely scaling custom domain website, your SaaS business, right? Like you don't have to think about it. We do have singular caddy instances that are serving tens of thousands of sites this way. Um, yeah, you don't have to worry about certificates. Cool. Uh, one more example here is, uh, local HTTPS, um, and this, notice that the site name is localhost. It's not a, a real domain name, it's just a, it's a host name, a local host name. So Caddy for like IP addresses and local host names, things that it can't get a public accessible certificate for, uh, it will use its own internal certificate authority and serve those over HTTPS using, uh, signed by itself basically. But the cool thing is, is that it actually in, automatically installs its root certificate into your system trust store. So the first time you run Caddy with this config, you need to type your password. Uh, it'll install its root certificate and then it'll issue a certificate uh, with that to, for for example, localhost or any .local or .localhost host name. And uh, that certificate will be valid for like a day or something and it will automatically renew um, if, you're, if it's still running. Um, and so you get trusted local host in your browser on your machine. This is great for like development. Um, but this can also be used for like mutual TLS and client authentication. Uh, I'm not going to get into it in this presentation, but same basic uh, functions apply to those like advanced production use cases. 
Um, and yeah, so in this example, we're just responding uh, with the happy Korok feed <laughs> for every request. It's hard coding that response. It's a good illustration. Um, so caddy file demo. So I showed you how the API works. Maybe I should show you how the caddy file works. Um, this is really easy. Actually, I should show you. You can actually run caddy file server. Uh, and you don't even need a caddy file at all if that's all you're doing. You can also do like caddy reverse proxy if that's all you're doing. Uh, although you do need a you need to say what you're reverse proxying to. So I don't know. I don't even know if I have anything there. But you can see that it's proxying localhost to localhost 9000. Um, you can also get command line help. Uh, by doing caddy dash h, nope, caddy help, yep. <laughs> uh, you can also do caddy help and then the sub command. So if you want to see like what options you have for file serving, caddy help file server, and you can see uh, how that works. So so that that file server example from earlier, caddy file server. And you can specify the root if it's you know var dub dub whatever. Um, so you may not even need a config file. Just just be aware of that. But I'll show you. Um, yes, I'm a noob and I use nano. Uh, so I'm just making a file called caddy file, and um, I'm just gonna I'll show you the local HTTPS and I'll, I'll just show you this one. Yeah, haha, you found me. Yeah, let's do that. I mean, this is obviously super simple, but most caddy files are not super complex anyway. So now if I do caddy run, you'll see that it's um, starting the admin endpoint, so we can manage it. Ah, look at this. It's doing servers listening only on the HTTPS port, but has no TLS connection policies. Adding one to enable TLS. This is automatic HTTPS uh, at work. Oh, and notice that it's picking up. So it's picking up the adjacent caddy file. I should have explained this. When there's a caddy file in the current directory and you run caddy run, it will automatically use it. So auto HTTPS does its thing, it sets up redirects for you. That's kind of cool. And uh, yeah, it looks like it's good to go. So I'm gonna open a new shell here. And can you see this? Um, I'm gonna do curl dash v HTTP localhost. You can see that it responded with a permanent redirect to HTTPS. Yeah, that's great. Well, if we follow that redirect, uh, yeah, ha ha, you found me. And look, that was over HTTPS, by the way, using a uh, local, uh, locally self-signed certificate. So anyway, really easy. Don't overthink it. Caddy file is pretty simple. Okay, time to finish. I do want to mention that uh, you know a lot of people recommend Caddy for how easy or simple it is to use. It's really common for like 600 lines of nginx config to turn into just 100 lines or less of Caddy config that that even does more for you. And yes, you can stand up production sites with just a few intuitive lines of configuration with Caddy. Um, but in order for those few lines to make any sense, like you still have to know how Caddy works. Um, you still need to like go through the documentation, which I'll show you in a second. Um, you still need to know how the internet works, how your computer works. Uh, and I say this not to, <laughs> no, no insults here or anything, but we do get a lot of questions on the forum. And and it really, oftentimes the problems have nothing to do with Caddy. They often are, are related to like network misconfigurations and just like people not knowing how the internet works or how the computer works. And we're happy to help with that. It's just um, they get mad at the software, though. They get mad at Caddy because it's not working. It's like, well, <laughs> it's actually doing its job, but there's a lot of pieces here to make this work. I mean, you need to understand how um, DNS and IP and HTTP and TLS and System D and firewalls and CDNs and PKI cloud services, like how you need to know how they all work before Caddy will be able to do its job. Um, most of the problems end up being DNS config, System D units. Docker, maybe like port forwarding, 
route, so routing, routing network. I think those are the big offenders anyway. So most of you probably know how your computer works, how the internet works, and if so, you should help out on our forums. We really need more helpers. Um, and anyway, the shorter the shorter caddy files, like they're they're great, but the, the the underlying JSON is really like much clearer as to what's going on. So just be aware of that. Um, I should show you the documentation really quick. If you go to the caddy website, this is the V2 page where you can see. Um, you know, here's a demo that I basically showed you already. Um, you can learn about V2, like why it's so cool. Actually, I've showed you a lot of this already. Uh, I'm just proud of this page. How's that? Anyway, go to documentation and you can see Caddy welcomes you. I recommend once you've installed Caddy, so over here, go to install. You can see the easiest way is just to get a static binary. You can just download releases from GitHub, which that works just by, if you go down here to assets, you can just download the one for your platform um, and then run it. Or you can use our download page. Our download page is really cool because you can choose your platform and we have a lot of options because Go is awesome. And you can just click which plugins you want, um, which features you need, really. Some really cool stuff here. Uh, yeah, I don't know. And then all you do is click download, and our build server will generate a, a, a build for you. Give it a minute or so, but but you can download your custom build. You can even choose plugin versions by typing them in here, you know, or whatever. I don't know. Um, so the download page is really cool. There are also packages that we maintain for various platforms if you're into that. We also show you how to manually install it as a Linux service. Just our documentation, we try really hard to make it good. So do do give it a read. It's open source. You can contribute if you don't understand something or don't like the way something is written. Um, I do recommend that everyone go through the Getting Started Guide. Um, this is very important to understand no matter how experienced you are. I already showed you some of it, but you should go through it. Um, refer to the command line reference and the API reference if you're using those. Caddy file, I highly recommend learning the caddy file concept. This shows you a visual structure. It helps you understand how the caddy file works, um, how, like what conventions it has, placeholders you can use. Very important to understand some of that, along with all the directives that you have at your disposal and matchers, um, all the ways that you can match requests. Um, and then all the global options. Like anyway, just you just need to know this stuff. Finally, I should show you the JSON config. If you plan to use that, uh, you should at least understand it and explore it a little bit. But um, we have this cool auto-generated JSON. Um, there, this documentation backend that I wrote um, generates it from the code, and you can see what each um, piece of JSON does and what modules fit in there, and uh, you can explore each, you know, this is the HTTP module. There's a lot of stuff. And, you know, you scroll down and you can see all the placeholders and all the fields and all possible values and how they all work. It's all in the documentation, I think. But, again, this is open source. And if we've missed something, then you should uh, file, like, some sort of pull request or an issue. The automatic HTTPS page is very important to understand. Um, because it's a new technology that, yeah, it just isn't very widely used yet for some reason. And then also we explain how to write plugins for Caddy if you want that. So we do we do try hard to make our documentation good. I recommend giving it a try. We're also very good about closing issues with our project. Um, Caddy has hundreds of thousands of users, probably over 100,000, and we have less than 100 open issues. The light blue color you see here are feature requests. The red is bug reports, and the loops on the bottom represent how long bugs uh, or the issues are open for. You can see that we actually close bugs pretty quickly usually, and most of the feature requests, they're, they're not a high priority, but like anyone can implement them as plugins anyway. Um, but do feel free to get involved in the project. Finally, if you find Caddy useful, I would really, it, it, 
it runs on your sponsorship. So if your company is using Caddy or its customers are using Caddy, uh, it's a really good look to sponsor and um, really like rely on that as I do work on Caddy full time. So please consider that. And anyway, thank you so much. And I hope you found this interesting and we'll give it a try.